through, I think, verse 2. Last Sunday, we're in the verse 3 today. Verse 3, Colossians chapter 3, verse 3, Colossians 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. Colossians 3, 3. I've learned over the years, I've talked really quick a lot of times to say the reference over and over so you can get it in there. Amen. Good to see y'all this morning. Amen. Jesus. Father, we love you. We pray to you. We give you glory and honor. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the manifest word. Jesus Christ came, walked this earth, lived a life, was tempted at all three points, but yet without sin. Thank you, Father, that he went to the cross. He died for us. Thank you, Father God, that we have risen with him. We have a new life in Jesus' name. Amen. What's the name of our church? What's the name of our church? New life. We have new life. Amen. New life Christian Center. We call it Christian Center. Number one, we identify with that new life. We'll be talking about life here a bit. But we identify with life, and we call it Christian Center because we have some ministries that we're doing here together. We support a lot of other ministries around uh, the nation and uh, even on the other side of the border, praise God. Mexico. But this verse here, it says in verse 3 of Colossians 3, for he, who is he? You and me. Look at your neighbor and say, and tell him, it's you. He's talking about you. He, you, me, and you. For ye are dead. Last time I looked in the mirror, it didn't seem like I was dead. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and it's like, you know, Just for <laughs> But it says, For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Read that again. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. So the verse before it, let me just back up there and read it. Verse 2. Let's see here. It says, set your affection on things above, not on things on earth. Now, we talked about that last Sunday, and I got into real depth there, talking about heavenly things instead of earthly things. And that what it is is earthly wisdom. A lot of people have that mentality of, well, I just can't have anything. I can't do anything other than just totally neglect myself. I'm going to tell you what, that's an unloving spirit. It's rejection. God created us. He made us and put us in this world and he knows that we have needs. Does your physical body have needs? Yes. Yeah, sure it does. Do you need to clothe it? you need to be able to take a shower, brush your teeth? you need to be able to lay down? Have a good night's rest? Wake up refreshed in the morning. God knows that we need certain things in this life. Amen. We have a tendency to get things backwards, though. We seek after those things instead of seeking after God, after his kingdom. Seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness. And when we get those things backwards, things get messed up, don't they? What I want you to know is this if you will just continue to seek after God and His kingdom, after His righteousness, all those physical needs are going to be met, number one. But every spiritual need that you need is going to be met. It's already met in Christ. You already have it. It's yours, and you just need to understand it. What it is, take possession of it because it's right there. He says, This is yours. But just the very thing of I will never leave you over Satan. Think about that. No matter what you're facing, what you're going through, if that one truth would just stay at the forefront of our mind, what we're going through, he's not going to leave it. He says he's, he has it, he never will. That's going to carry you through all the way to the end. Think about that. All I need is you. All we need is him. Amen. He knows everything you need before you ask for it. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. So with that verse in context, he moves in for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Paul's instruction in verse 2 is to seek those things above. Seek the things that are above, which, what are those things above? Heavenly instructions. All the things that God has given to you. Seek after those that seek after his kingdom. Seeking after his righteousness. Continue to keep those at the forefront of our mind. Then all this other stuff is going to be just taken care of. Yeah. Seek those things above, and he follows with this statement that ye are dead, which is a picture of us buried with Christ. Think about that. Buried with Christ in the grave. Just our very baptism that we were commanded to do, water baptism, in obedience, that is a picture, it's a proclamation, it's a declaration, I believe it's spiritual warfare, that when we go under the water, that is a picture of us being dead in Christ. Don't think under Christ's word. Taking them down once for the Father, taking them down second for the Son, taking them down the third time for the Holy Ghost. Well, I don't know if I can catch my breath in between those. We just do it one time. That's all it's needed. Praise the Lord, we bring you up. But coming up out of that water is a picture of us being risen with Christ. And so we identify with that. I've been talking about identity for quite a while now. That if you know your identity in Christ, then you won't be this. Yes. Uh, oh, I'm happy to pray. I'm doing great. Hallelujah, man. And the next time you see that person or you see yourself in the mirror, oh, it's bad. Come on. Knowing your identity of who God says you are. And I would say that you can't comprehend your authority in Christ until you understand your identity in Christ. Did you, did you say amen to that? Know your authority because you know your identity. Knowing that you are a child of the Most High God. Amen? Praise the Lord. But it's a picture of us buried with Christ and planted in the likeness of his death. So, if we are dead, then those things of the earth should they have an influence upon us? And I think that's what Paul is telling us here. The earthly wisdom, what does it tell us? It tells us so many weird stuff. Why? Because behind it is a spiritual kingdom that is not of our fathers. It's a disobedient kingdom that is trying to get us out of step with God in seeking after those things. It's me first attitude is what it is. And it's all vain. So think about this. I heard a preacher say this one many years ago. He says, if you're dead in Christ, if you're buried in Christ, then the things of this world, if they were to come up to that grave, think about this, go into the grave, and you lay it, and a lot of people take things and put them out in the grave, and that's not in there anymore. I don't believe it's soul sleep. There's religions out there, uh, or even Christians that, that believe in soul sleep. They think you're there in the soul. No, to be dead, to be absent from the body is what? To be present with the Lord. You ain't there anymore. That's just the body that's going back to the grave, man. It's going, it's decomposing, going back into the soul. But how would it be for us to say, you know what, let's go out to the, the graveyard, and let's go out there and see old so-and-so, and let's see if he would like some pizza. And we, we get some pizza, we pick it up, and we go out there, and we're sitting there around the grave. That's weird. There's people that do what's called grave soaking, too. Ah, that's weird stuff. Don't go get that. That's all the grave demonic stuff. That's not getting fun about this one. But we go there, we lay that pizza down there, and we're like, hey, got some, got your, got your paper, got you some pepperoni. Do you think that person's going to come up out of that grave and grab a slice of pizza? Put down some pizza with you. You know why? They're dead. Pizza doesn't matter to them anymore. 
you can put some pizza away up there, can't you? What's your favorite? Pepperoni, there you go. Very smart. Hard to beat pepperoni. But picture that if you're dead with Christ and in Christ, why are these things having such an influence upon us and causing us to do this? I would propose that your identity is a thing that is you. Are you with me on this? Come on. Earthly wisdom. Is it an influence? Yes, it is. Why? Because we are in earthen vessels. This is an earthen vessel. This is my earth suit, as so many people would say. One, time that one day this earth suit will be gone. Hallelujah. I'm going to put on a glorified body. Glory to God. But those things present themselves to us daily, do they not? Every day. We have a choice to believe the truth over earthly wisdom. Are you following me here? We have the choice to say, you know what? This is what is true right here. Am I dead with Christ? Come on. Are you dead with Christ? Are you dead in him? Come on. It's an influence. And for so, for so many, even in the body of Christ, I've seen it over and over. Many Christians struggle with their identity and are tossed to and fro. And when they get that, when that struggle that's going on and they're tossed back and forth, the problem every time is going to be what they're believing. What you're believing down on the inside of you, what you are entertaining up here in this this morning, what you are listening to. That's why it's so important to stay in the Word of God. That's why it's important to read the Word every day, just to know that you know that you know. Because I'm going to tell you, if you went over this Bible, how many of you open in your Bible every day? Oh, your hand. That's okay. Got you on God speaks to us of His Word. Yeah. He speaks to me throughout the day. I, I read His Word in the morning, but through the rest of the day, He's speaking to me. And you know what He's speaking? He's speaking His Word. Now, it may not be a verse I read that day. It may be a verse I read a week before, or a month before, or whatever. But all of a sudden, the scripture comes up. The beautiful thing about reading the Word of God and, and Love the word of God. How many of y'all love the word? How many love the word? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When one scripture comes, he doesn't just stop there. He doesn't just come and I'll never leave you. Doesn't say anymore. What does he do? I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And then all of a sudden, more scripture. Starts coming behind that. You are loved with an everlasting love. I am upholding you with my righteous right hand. And if we would just listen and say, Yes, Lord, tell me more. Oh, tell me more. Tell me. Speak to me more. I'm listening, Lord. If we would just stop and listen to Him, then what we're doing is we're yielding to Him, but we're not allowing the enemy to have any area of, of infiltration. Now, he's going to keep trying. He's going to keep trying to weasel his way in there and speaking some stuff. But the word will always reassure you. It will minister to your heart. It will always pick you up. It's going to carry you. Amen. Earthly wisdom doesn't do that. If at most it may have a short little distance of living out something and maybe it affects your emotions and you're on that emotional high or whatever because you followed some earthly wisdom. You're like, yeah, and next thing you know, <clears throat> crashes. And then the next thing you do is you're looking for something else. And then the next thing is you're starting to climb. Like, Ooh, yeah, here we go. 
And then all of a sudden, what's it do? And then leaves you. It leaves you holding the bag. It leaves you empty because it can never fill you. God created you a spiritual being. And he created you, number one, to glorify him, but to also be filled with his love. Amen. And only God can do that. Nothing can do it. No thing, no person. Only God can. Now it's great to have relationships. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord for my wife. I can't meet everything in life. She can't meet everything in me. I have to trust in God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus. I love my wife. Hallelujah. Love you, man. So if we were dead, then those things of the earth, they should not have that influence upon us. Christians who struggle with their identity are tossed to and fro with earth and the wisdom. Now here, I'm just going to give you a few examples. Earthly wisdom is a mindset that it's a mindset that you have got to watch out for yourself because no one else is going to do it. Think about that. I gotta watch, I gotta watch my back all the time because there ain't nobody watching out for me. I used to hang out with folks when I was real young that we all had to watch out with our backs. I had to watch out for my back even just around them. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Couldn't trust them. Wrong people to be running around with, right? Lord got a hold of me. Turn me around, praise God. But it's a mindset that nobody's got your back, so you got to get your back for yourself. As believers, is that true? No. Who's got your back? God. He's got your back. He's watching over you. He's watching over every step that you put out there. He sees it before you even put it down. He's got your back. He's got your front side. He's got your left. He's got your right. He's got a button. He's got an eight. Praise the Lord. Why? Why? Because you are his possession. You belong to him. You belong to God. Did you know that for a king to have you under his rule, it is his responsibility to take care of you. Come on. The responsibility for King Jesus is to take care of you. It's to watch over you. So many times we get the attitude or the mindset King Jesus is sending us out in a way to be slaughtered. That's not true. He is with us. He's not back on the hill saying, okay, send that way out. Or send the next one. You don't understand your identity. You have that mindset. But he is at the forefront. Now I'm going to tell you what. If, if, if Christ is at the forefront, and he is, is anything going to get past or through him? Come on, think about that. And if we are following him as, as his children, as his subjects, he's not going to down before we can get there. Oh. All we got to do is just follow. That's what he says. Follow me. But talking about that app that we all have, download. Follow his, follow his word. Yeah. How about this one? I've got to have the next best thing because it will qualify me as important. Think about that one. I've got to have this. I got to have that because it's going to qualify me. I don't mind. And it all looks to see me that I'm important. Is that a true statement? Okay. No. It's not. Are you important? You betcha. You are important to, to those in the body of Christ. Amen. 
You're important to God Almighty. You are so important to him that he sent his son to die for you while you were yet a sinner. Are you sinners anymore? I don't identify as a sinner. I identify as a saint. Do I sin from time to time? Yes, I get in fear from time to time. This whole thing that came through this area, the property, there were times that while I was driving and my back was to the mountain, caught myself looking in the rearview mirror. But, but no, 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 no. I'm not trusting you, Lord. Even if it all just burns up, I'm still trusting you. You're going to work it out. You're going to bring it all out for good. Glory. That, that, that's trusting in God no matter what our physical eyes see. Knowing that we know that we know that we know he's got it. But we have the opportunity many times throughout the day this is the end. And when we go to start going down, all that is is is, is, is uh, showing that we've just listened to the end instead of listening to God. When we crash and burn and we're down there and we're just wallowing in it, are we listening to the Holy Spirit? No. Listen to the devil. No. Not Satan himself, but we're listening to his minions. And they, they speak to us all the time. Trying to get us to come into agreement with a lie. Come on. I've got to have the next best thing because it's going to qualify me as important. I'm going to see myself as important and everybody else is going to see me as I got it together. I got this. I got that. That has nothing to do with that. Earthly wisdom is right. Think about that. Earthly wisdom is prideful. It's jealous. It also boasts about itself and is self ambitious. Go ahead and turn in your Bibles to James chapter 3. James chapter 3, 13 through 18. And I'd like to read that to you. This is going to show you heavenly wisdom versus earthly wisdom. James chapter 3, 13 through 18. And it says here, who is a wise man? How do you want wisdom? So many times we go and we, we struggle with things. We don't know what to do. We're lacking wisdom in some areas. And the word of God says, if you lack wisdom, let him ask. Sometimes I struggle with that too. I'm going on and Okay, what's going on? I just don't understand this. And then, and then the Holy Spirit is going to ask for some wisdom there. Wisdom is a fine knowledge, so you need knowledge also. Amen? And I said, wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait a minute. Lord, I ask for wisdom in this situation. It's wisdom here. Then I'm waiting to wait on the Lord. He gives us revelation. And he shows me. So many times we are lacking in that. Because we've asked not. He has not because he asked not. He's just asking him. How many of y'all believe that if you ask, God's going to give it to you? Well, how many of you believe if you ask, God's going to give it to you? Why? Why would he give what you're asking for to you? Such as wisdom. But according to his word, he is faithful. So I like to say, if you didn't hear it, church, you stand on it. You stand on it. You ask him, okay, number one, this is knowledge right here. Not the world's knowledge, it's God's knowledge. But you ask him, okay, now that I've read that, how do I apply that in my life? How do I apply that over the next few moments, over the next hours, the days, the month? How do I apply? What, what do you want me to do with that, Lord? He'll show you. He'll lay it out there. I mean, I've had to just sit down and say, okay, I'm just going to sit here until you show me, Lord. So no, I sit there for a while. And all of a sudden, he may lay it out in a video, may speak it gently to my spirit. Or he may tell me, go look at this scripture. And then one scripture takes me to another scripture, to another scripture. And before I know it, I've got a beautiful adventure. 
God, what are God going to do? He says, who is a wise man and do with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness and wisdom. So many times our conversation betrays us, shall I say. Because sometimes our conversation is not in line with the word of God. And when it's not in line with the word of God, what it's doing, it's betraying you. It's turning you over to the enemy and to his vices because of things that we're speaking out of our mouth that we're not saying with the word of God. We need to repent. Amen? Repent for those things. It says, let it show out of a good conversation His works with meekness and wisdom. Good conversation is speaking God's word. It's speaking those things which are right. Amen? Let it show out of a good conversation His works with meekness and wisdom. There's meekness and wisdom in there. But if ye have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, it says, glory not. And lie not against the truth. So think about that. When those things are present, number one, what are they? Spirit. And it causes us to come into agreement with it if we're not in agreement with the Word of God. And so we're basically saying God's Word is not true. That's why He says lie not against truth. Think about that. Just get out of agreement with the enemy, get into agreement with God's Word. And it's going to just fall in place. I love watching Sandy and the kids. I'm, I'm not so much of a puzzle person. How many puzzle people do we have here? Cool. Hey, <laughs> I did. Let's get a puzzle and put it out there, and y'all can work on puzzles and put it together. Every now and then, I'll sit down and I'll start. And now, we have in our puzzles today, you have a picture of what you're working on. And so it helps kind of direct you a little bit. But I love seeing the finished product, and I love just walking by and like, wow, that's cool. It's getting closer. It's a little bit of really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And every now and then I'll sit down and I'm like, put it in there and I'll walk away. <laughs> There's times I'll sit there and I'll work on it. Sometimes when I really work on it really hard, I don't get anywhere with it. I just have to walk out and like, there's no thing. Put it in. Trusting God is allowing for every puzzle piece to just put together. And when it's put it together, it's this beautiful, glamorous picture of what God has given us. The Son of Jesus Christ. The only way you're going to see it is through the Word. Staying in agreement with the Word. Yeah. But he goes on and says, This wisdom descended not from above, but it's earthly. So there's an earthly, earthly wisdom. So this is not heavenly wisdom. It's earthly wisdom. So here's what it is. This wisdom descended not from above. So those things are uh, selfishness, what have you. It says earthly is sensual. is devilish even. So there's the picture of that kingdom that is in rebellion against God. That's that kingdom that wants us to be in agreement with them to bring about their purpose. Their purpose ain't any good. Their purpose is still kill and destroy. When we come into agreement with that, what does it do? It steals, kills, and destroys. Kills relationships, steals from you, steals your joy, steals your peace. It says, for where envy and strife is, so there's a picture of envy and strife. That's not heavenly wisdom. No. For where envy and strife is, now I'm going to tell you what, I can't stand strife. I don't have anything to do with strife. When strife is present, count me out. How many of you like strife? Oh, I just, I'm just driven for strife. I just want to, man, I want to engage with strife, and I want to just have that thing all over me, and I want to have it all over everybody else, too. That's not God. But I know some people that are like that. They're just driven to continue to argue. And it just pull in so many more things. And I'm like, maybe listen to the devil. Quit it. Quit listening to the devil. Listen to God. That's not heavenly wisdom. It's earthly. It's sensual. It's the enemy. It doesn't come from above. But for our Indian and strife is, there is confusion. You ever been in the midst of strife? I have. 
I've been right in the middle of it. I'm like, oh my goodness. Can't even think. Only thing you do is just, next thing you know, you just speak out of your mouth and you just add to it. It's confusion. There is no unity in it at all, but total confusion because it's not based in God's word, but it's based against God's word. Does that make sense? It's confusion. It's not heavenly wisdom. There's confusion in every evil work. So the picture you need to get with earthly wisdom is a huge open door. Listen, two open big doors. But open as a garage door. Got the garage door, front door, side door, back door, got all the doors open. The next thing you know, the devil's just ruling the in there. He's free to come and go at his will anytime because it's total, total confusion. That's perfectly twisted. I would say if you're dead, why are you listening to him? Oh, I think I'm going to come out of here and give me a slice of that pepperoni pizza up there. Mm, that sounds so good. It's actually permeating and coming down through the soil now. Oh, it's ridiculous. Come on. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Pure. There's nothing in it that is corrupt. The wisdom that is from above that God says is yours, you have a right to this wisdom. It belongs to you. It is your right. But it's your responsibility to seek those things. Man, I'm just going to sit here and give me down the road. Read your birth out of it. thing I look on YouTube, I'm looking on YouTube. It's early, so look at her Give me some heavenly wisdom on you. Probably won't. You might find a little bit in there, here and there. Next thing you know, man, you're going to be so confused. Man, I've had people send me so many things. Hey, you listen to this person. And I, I listen to it a little bit. And after a while, like, that's just confusion. It's confusion. Why? Because it's earthly wisdom. It says, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, it's not contaminated, then peaceable, peace with God, even peace with man. They may be in confusion, but you can walk around in peace, praise the Lord. Gentle. Hmm, think about the word gentle. Just the word gentle. Delicate. Gentle, watch it over, taken care of. Gentle and easy to be entreated. Full of mercy, not full of confusion, not full of all the things that are of the world. And good fruits. Good fruits. I like good fruit. I mean, I like good fruits. Where'd y'all go with the twin? At the cherry trees, some cherries. They brought some cherries and made some cherry. I got some of your cherry jelly. They come to me. Good. It's good for me too. It's good for me. But I like good fruit. I don't like bad fruit. I like good fruit. I don't like bad fruit. I, well, you know what I do with bad fruit? I just start them. Now, bananas. <clears throat> Sometimes people throw them bananas away when they start turning dark and they get rid of them. Oh, no, 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 those are good bananas. Aren't they? Come on. Banana nut bread. All that good stuff. Just start them. So they should be good. Now, some of that stuff, when you have a worm coming out of it, so you just throw that thing away. Some people cut it off with it. Good fruits without partiality. Not partial to one, partial to the other. Treat all of them the same. And without hypocrisy. What is hypocrisy? Saying one thing but doing something totally different. Speaking out of both sides of your mouth. Speak righteousness here and you speak 
hypocrisy over here, things that are not in line with God's word. And it says, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. So look there. That's something that we are to be doing constantly is making peace. Number one, we're at peace with God. We should be. And if we would walk in that peace, then you know what? It doesn't matter what situation I walk into. I may walk into uh, an area where you see this big old bubble of confusion and strife. And I walk in and all of a sudden it just kind of, instead of enveloping me, it just kind of pushes off. <laughs> well, I ain't going to have nothing to do with that. I speak righteousness. I'm a thermostat. So are you. We got the AC going in here for y'all. Yesterday we start cooling it off. Praise the Lord. It feels good in here. But we had the choice to come in here and turn it on or just leave it off. We changed the environment in here. So we all came in very instantly. I'm going to get my jacket up. We got blankets in here. Now I'm, I'm warmed up a little bit and it, it feels good. But we changed the environment because we had the choice to do that. Hands turned on. Thank you, Hannah. Praise the Lord. She does, yeah. <laughs> She probably turned it on for me. She knows that I need it. She turned it on for all of us. Picture that, though. The environment in here changed when that got turned on. It's comfortable. It feels good. How do you like being chairs? Are they comfortable enough for you? Come on. Not sitting on a rock. Hallelujah. Not sitting out in the sun. You're in the shade in here. We have... The authority, we have the right to change the environment wherever we go. But so many times we allow the environment of those things that we walk into and all of a sudden we're enveloped in that bubble of confusion. It should not be that way. We need to be walking in influence. Amen. We need to be the influencers. Influencers for what? For help. For peace, for joy, for righteousness. Us being dead should not be influenced by the sensual and devilish things that James is talking about. Heavenly wisdom is meekness and humility. Earthly wisdom finds its worth in, in identification and jealousy and self-ambition. Inordinate desires for things that do not belong to us even. And even a lust for power to rule over others is demonic. Think about that. I want them in subjecting to me. I want to rule over them. That's demonic. I would say that those are actually demonic wisdom because they are the ones behind those desires and thoughts. They have trained people to think that way and therefore to manipulate others. All such things have their root tapped in deeply because of the individual having no fear of the Lord. Think about that. Fear of the Lord is what we are called to have. That's the beginning of everything right there. Turn over to Proverbs 1.7. Let me, let me give you that verse real quick. Proverbs 1.7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So when you fear him, you reverence him, you respect him, what do you do? You said, I'm going to submit to God. Is that fear? Now, I'm not talking about, I fear you, so I'm going to go over here and hide under a rock because I fear that you're just getting ready to blow me off the face of the earth. No, that's not my father in heaven. You have that vision of a uh, picture of God that you don't know who God is. But it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So therefore you submit to him, therefore you start getting a download because you're going to be doing it. Get ready for you get it into the word of God. Amen? It says, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So even wisdom and instruction that they're getting, they don't have anything to do with it. 
may speak it out of the mouth for a while, for a time, for a season, but it's not down in the heart there. And therefore, when pressure comes, and what happens when pressure comes? Things start getting out. The pressure comes, and the next thing you know, things start slipping. Coming out. What needs to be coming out of us when pressure comes? Peace, joy, righteousness. Because we have vitality in God, don't we? Following the destruction here in Proverbs would solve so many issues we face every day and are tempted with by if we would just keep its instruction. Just fear God. Fear the Lord. Reverence Him. We need to realize that we as Christians are dead. We are buried with Christ. Therefore, we have the right to this heavenly wisdom. It belongs to you as a believer in the Most High. You know, I think I'm only just kidding. Just give Him a little bit. Give Him too much. You're giving Him too much. You're giving Him too much. Take that one back. That's not God. If he is so willing to give to us, if we would just say, here I am. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. I'm right here. He does. Yeah. We have the right to this heavenly wisdom. It's your inheritance right here, right now. Yeah. Belongs to you. So to not seek after those things, you're negating the blessings that come along with that. Mm. How many of you get a little nugget of heaven with wisdom and you're like, wow, that's good stuff. Come on. You chew on it, you chew on it. Whoa. Man, next thing you know, it's opening up some more heavenly wisdom. More you know. And the next thing you know, it's affecting just the way you think. The way you think about situations and things that come across your plate, whereas in the past, boy, it would just been a total knock you down, slap you down, and next thing you know, you're just gone. But you're like, hey, you know what? I'm above that situation, praise the Lord. That ain't going to affect me anymore. Now, it's there. It's trying to do it. But you know what? I'm not moved by what I see. I walk by what? Faith. Faith in what? Faith in the word. He's giving me the word. Amen. Don't walk by sight. We have the right to vitality. We have the right to vitality. We need to see God's kingdom first so that everything else will be added unto us. God is not telling us we need to go without. He knows we have needs. We just need to get our priorities right. Earthly wisdom gets your priorities out of check. That's all it does. And when you don't understand that you're dead, then those earthly wisdoms come and they say, hey, have a slice. Have a slice. Or just so bad. Dead. Dead and earthly wisdom. I'm alive under Christ. I'm alive to heaven with wisdom. It's mine. Can you say it's mine? It's mine. It belongs to you. He knows we have needs. We just need to get our priorities right. What is your priorities getting right? God first. Identity is the key to what we pursue. If we do not identify ourselves as dead, then we will pursue those things that are contrary to those things above. The next part of verse 3, Paul says, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Your life is hid with Christ in God. The word here for life in the Greek is zoe, C-O-E, zoe, zoe, which means the state of one who is possessed of vitality or is animate. It means the absolute fullness of life, both essential and ethical, which belongs to God, life real and genuine. You can only get that from God. 
You can't get it from earthly wisdom. You can't get vitality. You can't get worth from the uh, uh, earthly wisdom. If anything, it's, it's just going to just get you on that little emotional high for a little while. That's how it does. Life real. Life that is genuine. A life active and vigorous. A life that is devoted to God. I can say it in one word. Blessed. 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 The word animate means to give life to. Think about that. It means to give life to. To enliven. To fill with spirit. With courage. With resolution. Think about that when it comes to us in our relationships. Are we doing that? Are we imparting vitality? Are we imparting, are we imparting life? Are we imparting strength? Are we imparting wisdom? Or are we imparting the funny duds? Is that a good candy? The funny duds? No. Can I have some funny duds? Want some funny duds? No. People don't like that. People don't like the funny duds. Yeah. I've been there. I've been a funny dud. Come on. I started getting to the word and realized, wait a minute. Everything is subject to change. Glory to God. All I got to do is come into alignment with God's word. I just got to come into agreement with it. And I'm going to tell you, people are all going to affect you if you let them. The shine for Jesus. Some people don't like the shine for Jesus. Because they're funny guys. Are we invigorating for others? Man, I hope when you come around me that I'm invigorating for you. I encourage you. I, I mean, I can't give you something I've not already experienced. I, can give, I give what I experience. How you doing today? Yeah. Oh. Next thing you know, that starts rubbing off. Let it. I will only give you what I'm chewing on. No, we won't go there. Other than the word, I will do it. But are we invigorating for others or are we pulling them down with our words? The picture of being dead and my life hid with Christ in God, that when I listen to those things that are earthly wisdom, what I'm doing is I'm calling his word alive. Because his word, his word is true, is it not? I'm just yielding to a lie is what I'm doing. I'm either dead with Christ or I'm not. You're either dead or you're not. If you're dead with Christ and you do die with him, and you are hanging with him on the cross, then these things that, that, that drag us into the buddy duds, whatever you want to call it, you put whatever name you want on it, if you really die to Christ, then those things are just lies and you're just letting them in. We need to say, get out. Get out. Discouragement, get out in the name of Jesus. Unbelief, get out in the name of Jesus. Anger, get out in the name of Jesus. Unforgiveness, get out in the name of Jesus. Rejection, get out in the name of Jesus. Unloving, get out in the name of Jesus. I love myself. I used to think I was my worst enemy. Boy, I used to just kick myself and kick myself when I was down. So y'all know what I'm talking about, if not all of you. Then I finally realized, wait a minute, I really do love myself. God loves me. He's told me to love myself. I'm going to start loving myself. And in my loving myself, what happens is, I have to realize God loves me. He's not rejecting me. But then I start loving others. I start caring for others because I'm caring for myself. Because I can't 
express. I can't give what I've not already entertained, what I've already latched on to. If I haven't latched on to that, then you ain't getting it. Nobody else is going to get it from you unless you latched on to that. Come on. Are you seeing the picture here? Are you seeing that you're dead? At church, of the dead. Glory to God. In Christ. Hallelujah. We got the spirit. So to be dead in Christ is to be alive in the spirit. Amen. To experience the spirit. Are we invigorating for others? It is a privilege to be dead and have your life hit with Christ in God. Did you realize that? Do you know that? That is a privilege for you. That God has given you this right. And to realize this. Privilege to be dead and have your life hid with Christ and God. This life has given us three things. It's given us three things. Justification. Amen. Justified, never seen. That's the picture. Justification. It's giving you justification. It is giving you sanctification. You are sanctified. If, if you weren't sanctified, you couldn't even come into the, God's presence. You've been made holy. And you need to see yourself that way and understand that. If you don't see that and you don't comprehend that, then you're going to walk around with unloving rejection all the time. And you're going to beat yourself up all the time. And you're going to be constantly trying to achieve and do things in order to get approval of God and approval of man. God says, I already approved. If man doesn't approve it, then it's their sin. Let it go. One other thing that's given us glorification. Like I said earlier, when I woke up this morning, I woke up. It's the way they go. I don't look glorified. But God looks down at me and he already sees me at the finish line. One day I'm going to put on that glorified body and I'm going to never look at it. Because there's going to be so much out there. To go and to do. Justified, sanctified, Lord. That is your privilege. That is your right. It is your right to embrace, to embrace sanctification and get out of works. It is your right to embrace sanctification. Say that is mine. That belongs to me. It's your right to embrace justification. That you are justified because of what Christ did. This life is so sure and present right now. So many times, yeah, it, it, it's hit with Christ in God. And we're, we're looking at somewhere that's off down the road, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years from now. Uh, so with Christ right now. You need to see with Christ right now. But it is so secure This life is so sure and present right now, not just somewhere off in the future. That is a definite that our life is secure to be with God for all eternity. Hallelujah. Well, praise God for that. But I think Paul is instructing us here to realize that all we need is with Christ. In it. That, that one song summed it up. That one song summed my message in all I need. It is such a beautiful thing to realize that nothing is lacking, nothing is mit missing with Christ. We have everything. If we would just get this at the forefront of our aim, get it at the forefront of our mind and our heart and our spirit, and just know that we know that we know God's got me. He's got you. What else do you need? Seek first the kingdom of God and righteousness and all these things are gathered up to you. Quit getting the cart in front of the horse. A lot of times I see a picture of we're yoked with Christ. Christ is the one that yoked. That yoke was made specifically for us as individuals. It's specifically designed for each and every one of you. We're like wanting to get out of that yoke and get the goat 
and the ox, everything back there behind, and the cart out front, not even really hooked up, just kind of standing on the road, just running down the road. The ox are like, what in the world is going on? Aren't we supposed to be tied up to that? No. That's what the devil wants. Wisdom is having the right knowledge and how to use that knowledge. It is your benefit as long as you do. It is your right. When we realize this, everything else just falls into place. Just realize that you're dead. The devil comes and tempts you with something that's like dead. Or dead. I've been to the devil over the years. I don't have conversations with him. I, I turn and I'll say, Shut up, devil. That one again? Really? I believe if we would keep it in the forefront of our mind and our heart that when temptations come and we respond to them, and I, I know Jolene teaches the 22nd rule, and I think that's too much. Because when you you heal in 20 seconds, I mean, I, I can, uh, here we go, you're worthless. This is this. Just, it's terrible. That's too long, folks. 20 seconds. That's too long. Jesus, when the devil came down, okay, 20 seconds. Tell me more, devil. No, don't put up with it for even a second. I believe if we would just stop right there and say no and replace that lie with the truth. He wouldn't even have a moment to start infiltrating us. Maybe he needs to just he to come up with maybe a phrase based on the word of God, whatever he comes, whatever it is. Just, Lord, God, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I, I don't know. I'm not going to tell you to come up with something that you can ask you to say this. But when the devil comes to me, I start praising God. Because he doesn't like to hang around the praise of God Almighty because of what does he want? He wants the praise. And if you ain't praising him, here's how you praise him. Tell me more, tell him. But if you ain't praising him, what's he got to do? You submit it to God, therefore, he going to hang around? Or is he going to leave? Yeah. Praise I'm going to do one more before I finish up. This next verse, let's talk about the same thing. Christ, for Christ, who is our life, shall appear, and it shall be all appear with him in glory. There's a second coming. Christ has already come once. There's a second coming. When he comes for the second time, bam, we're right there with him. That's a quick easy one. Yes. I'm so good. But we've talked about the line this morning, sowing. We need to get a picture of that sowing life, the vitality. That no matter where you go, you're either bringing that sowing with you, that life, and expressing that to people around you, or you're not. Now, if you're not, but you are dead, and you are with Christ and God, then you just listen to a lie. And if we listen to a lie, then what do we need to do? Amen. Yeah. Worship team, would y'all come? I'm going to leave you with just a few things about life. Number one, life, the source of it, comes from food. God. The word says in 1 John 5, 11, and this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in so. The source comes from heaven, not from man, not from earthly wisdom, but from heavenly wisdom. 
security of life. I know I'm secure with Christ. I know I'm secure with my daddy. Security of life is in Colossians 3.3. We just read it. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. That brings security. You ought to be secure. Is that one of our deals up here? Know that you know that you know that you know. Hallelujah. And then the gift of life is Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And then character of life. That would be John 10, 28. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. The abundance of life, my favorite is John 10, 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, but to kill, and destroy, and I come that they might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. Abundance, an abundance of life, that's vitality. That's bigger than the crown of life. Oh, the crown of life is not for me to wear, though. I have life. Every crown that God's going to give me, I'm going to cast it at the feet of Jesus. There are five crowns. We're going to talk about all those. But James 1 12 it says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Would you stand with me, please? How many love the Lord? Do you love him? Do you need him? Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you. Oh. Glory to God. You have a right to everything in Christ. Right here, right now. I don't know what you faced over these last few weeks, things that have been going on up on this mountain. If the enemy has crept in with some lies, some fears, some doubts, some wonders, or whatever, this is your time to come forward and say, Lord, I trust you. Now, you're not coming forward to say you're a sinner unless you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll take care of that, too. But you're coming forward to say, Lord, I'm listening to a lie, and I know you got me. Whatever insecurities the enemy has spoken, this is your time to come and just lay them at the feet of Jesus. And when you lay them there at the feet of Jesus, you don't run back up there and Leave them there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Walk away. Don't put on a false burden, Mary. You leave it there and say, God, I know you got it. Trust me. Amen. Let's worship the Lord if you need prayer.